Hi, welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Aurora Lung from Danville, California. In my last video, I talked about why I purchased the Sovel SV01 after comparing it to other printers with similar features. I also ordered a BL Touch that arrived five days later in a separate shipment. Today, we will install the BL Touch and update the printer firmware to make it work. We will also make a comparison to see if adding a BL Touch sensor will improve the print quality. Let's get started. We will do this in two steps. For the hardware part, we will mount the BL Touch to the hot end support plate. Open the cover of the base and do some wiring. For the software part, we will download and update the firmware of the printer so it can work with a BL Touch sensor. This is a packing box from Creality. Sovel and Creality share many components in their printers. Let's open the box and see what's inside. We have a sensor, a cable, a mount, some screws, and a replacement pin for the sensor. The assembly is pretty straightforward. We will put the sensor on this mount, then mount it on the hot end support plate. Okay. Let's tighten the BL Touch on the mount. It came with two washers. Put these washers between the BL Touch and the mount. Before we mount it to the support plate, we should wire the cable first. As you can see, the extruder stepper motor cable runs through this gap. The BL Touch cable should also run through the same gap. Let's open up the fan cover. This end with five pins is for the BL Touch, and the other end with two cables is for the motherboard. Let's run the BL Touch cable through the gap. Pull it all the way to the other end, since we need to travel a long way to the motherboard connectors. Leave around four to five inches to connect the BL Touch. Then we can put the fan cover back on and connect the cable to the BL Touch. Mount the BL Touch to the support plate. Make sure to mount it as level as you can. We definitely don't want a tilted sensor to level our bed. Before we open the base and connect the cables, we can remove the Z-limit switch, since the BL Touch will replace the switch and sense the lowest part the print head can go. Now, we can flip the printer to the side and open up the base. This is the motherboard. All these cables were glued together by hot glue. I would suggest removing the glue first. Use this two pin connector to replace the Z limit switch cable. Then we have this three pin DuPont connector, which goes here. You can see an arrow here, which is the yellow wire. It should align with the D11 pin. Connect the three pin DuPont cable to D11. Make sure the yellow wire faces towards this side. Use the two pin cable to replace the Z limit switch cable. Make a final check to make sure your connections look like this. Now it's time for the software part. We will download the firmware and upload it to the printer. I can simply go to their website, select support, and then go to document download. Scroll down to our printer model, which is the SV01, and there are quite a lot of files here. We will focus on these two, the version 1.1.6.1 firmware with the BL Touch, 
Marlin 2.0 firmware for the BL Touch. We have two different versions here. Marlin 2.0 is designed for 32-bit boards, but it also works on 8-bit boards. To make it simple, we will just download the 1.16 version, which is the same as what the printer came with. Okay, we have downloaded the Sobel SV01 firmware 1.16 with BL Touch, which is a hex file. We have a few options to upload this file to the printer. The easiest way is to use Cura. Open Cura, select the SV01 as the active printer, then go to Settings, Printers, Manage Printers. When you press Update Firmware, you can see these two buttons are unclickable. You need to connect the printer using a USB cable. Now, we can click Upload Custom Firmware and select the hex file we just downloaded. Then, turn off the printer and turn it back on. Since we just refreshed the firmware, we can go to Control, scroll all the way to the bottom, and select Initialize EEPROM. Let's try to auto-home the printer. If the BL Touch is working, it should move to the center and try to detect the lowest point, which is the print bed. We can now use BL Touch to level the bed. Go to Prepare and select Bed Leveling. The BL Touch will check a 4x4 grid, which is 16 points of the print bed, and it saves the measured value to the EEPROM. It looks like it's working fine. Next, we need to set something called the Z offset. Since the BL Touch uses the pin to sensor the bed, it only knows the lowest point relative to the pin. We need to tell the printer how much distance is between the nozzle and the pin, so it can adjust accordingly. Auto home the printer again. Once it's done, we can find out the distance between the nozzle and the pin by going to Prepare, Move Axis, Move Z, and Move 0.1 millimeters. Turn it slowly and move down the z-axis. Try to move the nozzle as close to the bed as possible. Let's use the paper test. Try to move it close enough to the bed and slightly scratch the paper. Then, remember this number. For me, it's negative 1.5, which means the distance between the lowest point of the pin and the nozzle is 1.5 millimeters. In this case, we can save this value by selecting Control, Motion, then Z Offset. Set the value to negative 1.5. Go back to Control and select Store Settings. Now, the BL Touch should work normally. Finally, we need to change the starting G-code of Cura. So every time you slice a new G-code file, it will include the auto bed leveling command and run auto bed leveling before each print. Select the Sobel SV01 as the active printer. Go to Settings, Printer, Manage Printers, select SV01, and then click Machine Settings. You can see the Start G-Code part is on the left. We can add G29 after Home. The semicolon is just the comment. We can type G29 semicolon auto bed leveling. For the existing G-Code files, since they were sliced before you changed this Start G-Code, you need to manually add G29 to each of them, or the printer will not run auto bed leveling before it prints. If you don't want it to run auto bed leveling on every print, 
you can also call the last saved values from the EEPROM. Instead of G29, we can enter M420S1, which will load the mesh settings number one and apply it to the current print. If you didn't move the print bed at all since the last print, the last mesh settings should work. Okay, we have finished the installation of the BL Touch. Everything is working well. We can now close the cover of the base. Okay, we have now finished the installation of the BL Touch. Everything is working well. Now, we will do some prints and compare it to previous prints without the BL Touch. I will start by printing the same 20x20 20 20 test cube. Since this cube is a very small object, which is printed at the center, the bed was also quite level before I installed the BL Touch, so you won't see any significant differences. But if you have problems with manual bed leveling, or if you print something that occupies the whole print bed, like these 20 small rounded discs, which use up all of the print bed, auto bed leveling can improve the print quality. As you can see, those at the corner are basically identical to the one at the center. You can also compare the first layer of the disc print with the BL Touch and manual bed leveling. The first layer of the left one with the BL Touch is obviously cleaner, and these small 5mm circles are more accurate. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything in Corrector that could be improved on, feel free to let me know in the comments so we can bring better videos to you in the future. Why? <coughs> no! We have finished the installation of the BL Touch. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to support Aurora Tech Channel. See you in the next video.